It was tough. They struggled, but they finished the quarters well. Jason Tatum was a beast in the fourth quarter, and I loved this win over the New York Knicks. We're going to talk about it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day, and I got you every day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts on the weekends whenever they play. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show on YouTube. Hop in there. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see I'm sitting here on the floor at the TD Garden after Boston's 114-98 win. I usually do a, a, a format like things I liked, things I didn't like, and then things that make me might go, hmm, I'm going to kind of skip the didn't like. I'm going to pepper it in every once in a while. But there's nothing in this game that I'm going to sit here and be like, oh, I hated this in this game. No, this is a, actually a really nice win for the Boston Celtics, a tough win for the Celtics. It's a win that's brought to you by FanDuel. At least this podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get a $150 bonus bet. Bonus bets, $150 in bonus bets. That's what I'm trying to say. All you got to do is place a $5 winning money line bet. $150 if your team wins. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started uh later on my my hmm is the rotations because they went eight deep in this no luke cornet interesting substitution patterns kind of just something to you know keep an eye on but let's just start at the top celtics get this 114 98 win they came out it was not the best first half it was not the in fact both tatum i think tatum jalen and Joe Missoula all talked about how they were outplayed in the first half. And that's look, let's give let's start out by giving the New York Knicks credit. This is a tough team. This is I don't know where they're going to end up. They've got some, you know, there's some up and down play there and you got to figure a couple of things out, but they are coming in and giving Boston a fight. Anytime the Knicks and Celtics play, it's going to be a fight. And it was in this one. They came out. They took it right to the Celtics. They they crashed the glass. They they pushed it. They tried to get to the rim, and it was it was tough. They they went up by as much as eight in the in the first half. The first big thing that I liked in this game is the close to the second quarter. Down eight, Boston goes on a thirteen to four run. They end up down one. In the fourth quarter, I, I mean, I'm sorry. At the end of the second quarter, they they just instead of being kind of uh, beat up about, they weren't shooting well at that point. Uh, in fact, I think I have it written down here somewhere that the Celtics in that in that um, end of the second quarter, they were they were shooting like. 30% from three. They were shooting like 40% from the field. And then all of a sudden they close with a, a big six for eight push. Uh, everything turns around because they, they didn't give up. They didn't fall into the, uh, the trap of, Oh, we're not shooting well. So we're not going to defend. Well, they continued to defend and so they close the first half. Jalen Brown hits that buzzer beater. They go into the the half down one. They're feeling good about themselves. And that that's a big deal to go into the half. You've you've played some of your worst basketball, or or you know, they were out toughing you, they were outplaying you. 
And if you want to say that's one of the things that I didn't like, then yeah, that that's one of the things I didn't like that they the, the Celtics didn't come out and kind of have that toughness right away. But that's all right. Look, that's going to happen from time to time. No game's going to be perfect from beginning to end. Uh, we we approach it from an analysis perspective of you know we hold the team to perfection, and then anything short of perfection are the things that we're going to nitpick about. But the reality is. They came out third game in four nights, by the way, third game in four nights. So coming out and not exactly being uh, sharp at the beginning is that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. So they come out and whatever in, in, in the first, uh, what was it? 12 minutes in the first quarter and then another nine. So 21 minutes. They don't look so great. And then in the last three minutes or so of the second second quarter, they look amazing. You go into the second half with some momentum. And in the third quarter, back and forth, uh, you start to get a little bit of uh, a little bit more production. Jalen Brown starting to hit some shots. And there it is again, right at the end. It's a back and forth, tough battle. And you're thinking, okay, here we go. This is going to go down to, you know, this is going to come down to like the last two possessions of the game. And then end of the third quarter, 12, four run to close the quarter. All of a sudden they're up eight. So they go from down eight at that three, three twenty mark. I think it is of the second quarter to up eight at the end of the third quarter. And now all of a sudden the fourth quarter is just kind of up by double digits until Jason Tatum can get going. And he like sticking with it is the theme of this win. The Celtics stick with it and close quarters. Well, Jason Tatum sticks with it and closes the game. Incredibly. He starts Oh, for his first six, three pointers at a point where a lot of people might be saying, Hey, Hey buddy, stop shooting. Why don't you why don't you drive? Why don't you maybe step into a mid-range shot? No. Tatum is it has the confidence to say, I I know, I know. All I gotta do is find my range and hit that one. He misses one, right? It's it's 0 for 6. They get the offensive rebound. It's the it's the few minutes to go in the third quarter. He gets it back in the corner. And then all of a sudden that goes in. He does like the double kiss to the sky. And it's almost like it's the, oh, thank God that finally went in. <laughs> it was that that kind of sense of relief of like, there it is. And then he closes the game going four for his last four. A game, a game where he starts shooting 0 for 6, he ends up shooting 41% from three. And that's just fine. Five of 12, that's just fine. Right. That's that's the type you look at the forty one point two percent that you're going to be you sign up for that right away. Oh, Jason's going to shoot forty one percent from the from three today. Yep. Mark me down for that. And it's tough to do after you go over your first six. But when you go five for your next six, there it is. So I, I, I am impressed that Tatum and <coughs> excuse me, it didn't impact. It didn't impact the rest of his game. Because he still had six rebounds. He still had seven assists. He he did a little bit of everything. And it was um it was just an a, a, a superstar close to the game. He's not the only one that stuck with it. Derek White stuck with it. I'll talk about him. I'll talk about, about some of the other big performances coming up next. First, today's show is brought to you by Ibotta. Ibotta is, you know, look, you're going to be doing a lot of shopping, right? Thanksgiving is coming around. How does free Thanksgiving sound, right? Free? Yeah. Sign me up for free. Sign me up for Jason Tatum, 40% shooting. Sign me up for free Thanksgiving. Ibotta is here to give you cash back and help make sure your Thanksgiving table is complete because who wants the turkey without the graving? Starting, well, you know, it's November 14th, so it started a couple of weeks ago. For the fourth year in a row, Ibotta is giving 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast. Just add the offers in the app to redeem for everything you need to make your Thanksgiving 
feast complete. All you have to do is shop at your favorite retailers and upload your receipt. Ibotta gives you cash back, cash back, not points, cash on hundreds of grocery items, produce, the personal care, pantry goods. Uh, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're buying. And you can you can use it at hundreds of online brands like uh, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy. Download the Ibotta app right now. Use the code LOCKED, LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, LOCKED, to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner all here in November. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store. Download the free Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A app. Use the code LOCKED. That's how you get your 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving meal. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out the Lockdown NBA podcast. I'll be doing Lockdown NBA tomorrow with Jake Madison of Lockdown Pelicans. It's a fun way to keep up with the whole league. We got you covered there the same way I've got you covered here. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Got to shout out D. White because Derek White was uh, frustrating from the field. You could see it in his face. He was uh, 0 for 6 to start. He finally hit a shot. But I love the steal that he made late in the game. He uh, was doing all the little things in this game. Three points on one of seven shooting, and he was a plus 14. That's better than Tatum. That's Porzingis was a plus 19. Jalen Brown was a plus 17. Derek White was a plus 14. That's the impact, the type of impact that he makes on the team. He still had four assists. He had a steal. He had a block. Only one turnover. A couple of rebounds, including an offensive rebound. That level of play from Derek White, that's the type of stuff that's inspirational to these guys. You go out there every every day. We've talked about it. Every day is somebody's going to be not, not uh, getting – all of the offense that they might they might normally get. And Derek White's out there playing, just doing whatever. And, and Joe Mazzulla, I asked him about it after the game. And Joe was like, yeah, man, he he's out there. He, he Tough shooting night, but it never affects anything else in his game. The hustle at the end of that game where he could have stopped, like the, that game was basically won, but he gets that steal. He gets a three-pointer. And yeah, he has another moment just like Tatum did. He's like, oh, looking up at the sky, like finally. That's important, you know? And that that type of thing can carry over to the next game. You know, you have a tough night, you finally hit one, you make a contribution to a team winning. That kind of stuff is important. And I, you know, gotta make sure that Derek White gets the shout out. I mean, Jalen Brown uh played well, uh, generally speaking, 22 points. Uh, six assists for him, which is really good. The assist numbers are there for Jalen Brown. I think he's he's passing the ball pretty well. He finds Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, we'll talk about the rotations later, but one thing that I'm I'm starting to just come around on is I think Jalen Brown and, and Kristaps Porzingis should always be on the floor together. Whatever the substitution pattern is, figure out a way to make it Porzingis and Jalen Brown. They should always end up playing the same amount of minutes, right? I don't want Jalen Brown on the floor without Kristaps Porzingis. They've developed the chemistry. They should continue to develop the chemistry. I want to foster that chemistry. Uh, and I think if we're going to look at uh, combinations to get Jalen passing and finding his guy, finding the guy he's supposed to find, and playing off of somebody and, and not just going ISO, this could be the way to do it. So uh, he and Porzingis have developed a nice chemistry. He and Porzingis combined for 43. So he, Tatum, Tatum's numbers, by the way, 35.7 assists, six rebounds, uh, 22 points for Jalen Brown, six assists, five rebounds, a steal and a block, 21 points for Porzingis, six rebounds, three assists for Porzingis uh, with one block. So those guys, what's that work out to be? Uh, 50, 78 points for those guys. 
And that's that's pretty good for um, for a trio. Uh, kind of the bottom line for for this game was Boston had had three great scorers and New York didn't. The Celtics had Tatum and Brown and Porzingis, and New York got like. Uh, an inefficient 25 points from Julius Randle. They got a decent game from Jalen uh, Brunson, who uh, had 26, and that's it, right? The, the, you got 16 from Josh Hart, who, by the way, side note, the Josh Hart uh, pump fake, uh, it wasn't even a pump fake. He jumped, he was going to land, he was going to travel, and he just threw it off of uh, <laughs> Drew Holiday, who was kind of spun around, like he was, he was going to block the shot, got spun around. The ball just comes right back to Josh Hart, and he hits that three pointer. It's one of the wildest plays I've seen. Uh, so shout out to Jalen Brunson. Like I think he should get an assist and the bucket on that play. But uh, uh, Josh Hart got a decent, a decent game out of him. He doesn't re- ever shoot that well, but not big enough to combat what the Celtics had. So uh, just nice, nice performances from Brown, from Porzingis. Uh, off the bench, Sam Hauser. Shout out to Sam Hauser, who is much more than a three-point shooter now. Just He's not just a three-point shooter. 12 points, four rebounds, two assists. Uh, he Obviously, his job is going to be to hit three-pointers, which he did, four of six. He's shooting a ridiculous number now. Uh, remember when we were, when we were worried? Look, I'm at work. I wasn't drinking. That was just a, a bunch of R's in there that just kind of got jumbled up in my mouth. When we were worried, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> now he's he's shooting like 50% from three. Four of six in this one. He's found his range. But beyond that, moving the ball, defending, I, I think he's he's obviously your three-point specialist. But he's more than that. He can defend. I think you have to just accept he can't actually defend. He he deserves the minutes he's getting on the floor. He's getting 20-plus minutes. He played almost as much as Al Horford. Al Horford, kind of a quiet night there. Didn't do much, but he doesn't need to do much. This is just get out there, play your game, grab some rebounds, whatever. Not Two, two shots. I'm sure Al's just like, just chilling. Like, yeah, whatever. Whatever you need me to do. You mean to shoot? I'll shoot. If you don't, I won't. I'll just box out. Uh, but Hauser, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm actually excited for Hauser. This is, this is the exact kind of performance that, that you need from him. Kind of, kind of perfect from him. And then, you know, Peyton Pritchard comes in, does a decent job. Uh, five points, three assists, three rebounds, uh, just gets in there. And, and as, uh, Drew Holiday said, you know, he's a dog. He gets out there, he plays hard, he fights hard, and that's that's what you want from him. So, bottom line, when it comes to this game, I'm impressed with the fight. I'm impressed with their toughness. This is not a team that's been tough. This is not a team that you look at and be like, that team will win the Kevin Garnett bar fight. You, I, I compared that to the, you know, I used that comparison in my Boston Sports Journal piece. Whereas, you know, remember Kevin Garnett after a 27-point comeback uh, in Orlando? Comes over to Craig Sager. Craig's, like, talking to him. He's like, it's a bar fight, Craig. It's a bar fight. And <laughs> talk to Chuck. Chuck's been in a bar fight. That That's the type of win that th- this particular Celtics group, I mean, it's they haven't had this group, but they they haven't been exactly the toughest team. They have been. I've called them soft before. They've they they earned that soft moniker, but now I feel like maybe they're getting away from that. These are this is a tough game. This the Knicks are a tough team, and like a physical team, and they'll they'll come out and they'll they'll try to intimidate you. But Celtics held on and and threw it back at them, and and they fought through. Tough, 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 tough win. Very impressed. With this win, I'll be honest with you. It's a, you know, this is this is not just a a win over nobodies. The Knicks are going to be a tough team, and for the Celtics to to hang in there and and ride through some rough shooting and and kind of finish to finish the second quarter to finish the third quarter the way they did 
for Tatum to hang on and, and to shoot the way he did and close this game out, just super impressive, super impressive. Now, Joe Mazzulla did make some decisions that make me wonder, and I'm going to talk about that uh, in just a second. First, today's show brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and FanDuel is going to give you new customers $150 in bonus bets. The only thing you need to do is place a $5 winning money line bet. Five bucks, your team wins, you win whatever you get from that bet, and 150 bucks in bonus bets. So if you've been thinking about it, if you've been wondering about joining FanDuel, now is a great time. The app is incredibly easy to use. You just hop on, you can go from league to league to league. You can see the Celtics. They started out as eight and a half point favorites. They moved up to 10 point favorites because RJ Barrett was out so that the Knicks were shorthanded in this game. And you can click on the game and within it, you can go through and say, oh, Jason Tatum, the money line to, to uh, score 30 plus points. And you can start stacking those things up and do an in-game parlay and have some fun. Like you can really stack up if you win a few of these bets, then you can end up, you know, you place that $5 bet. You can end up winning, you know, pretty significant amount uh, if you can get that that in-game parlay to, to hit. Try it for yourself. Go to fanduel.com slash locked on. Start your, you know, if you if you want to try it out, this is a great time, the beginning of basketball season, the middle of football season. Check it out at fanduel.com slash locked on. The best part to me is they have tools to protect you. Set your limits, set your boundaries. You can use the tools that they have because they want to help you. This is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be something that, that hurts you. So they're going to help you out with all of these tools that they have so you can set your limits and you can gamble responsibly. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go ahead and check out the Lockdown Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Josh Lloyd, he's going to help you win your league by getting you insight like no one else is going to give you. Josh Lloyd is the best, absolute best when it comes to fantasy basketball. So check him out. Where uh, Wherever you get this podcast, you'll find that podcast as well. So the Celtics are still kind of tooling around with their uh, rotations. In this game, no Luke Cornett because, you know, that was tough. It's it's a tough matchup for him. And, you know, the, the way they play physically, it, it wouldn't have worked. And so they go to an eight-man rotation. And they manage it actually pretty well. You know, Tatum played 39 and a half minutes. Not great, but... With the fourth quarter that he was having, he, he might have been out there a little bit longer because he was closing the door. He was shutting the door. Could you have sat him a little bit earlier? Eh, at that point, a couple minutes, not that big of a deal. Uh, nothing egregious. Um, Horford plays 22 minutes. Hauser plays 21 and a half. Pritchard plays almost 20. Uh, this is, it's interesting no, 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 nothing beyond that. No, um, not even like an O'Shea Brissett to come out there and defend. No Lamar Stevens to come out there and defend. Jason Tatum comes out early, and usually it was Tatum and either Derek White or Drew Holiday, but Tatum was the first guy out and came out by himself. So a little bit of a substitution pattern difference, and there was a point where Porzingis and Brown kind of came back in together. I'm curious to see how the Celtics kind of work this out. But like I said before, I think when Tatum goes to the bench, they need to start considering mirroring Porzingis' minutes with Jalen Brown. And I know you don't want to take Porzingis off the floor when Tatum's on, you know, on the floor. You don't want to rob Tatum of that ability because He's a guy that frees up Tatum, but they're they're going to be on the floor, the three of them together anyway. So I think there's a way for Tatum. Whoops, have I been like behind that screen for this whole time? <laughs> YouTube, you know what I mean? Sorry if you're listening. Every once in a while, I feel bad for the listeners who are just listening and you hear me go, whoops, and you're like, what are you saying whoops for? You know, I can't see what you're doing. Well, you know, I screw up on the YouTube thing. I have to watch it to kind of produce my own show as I'm talking. And every once in a while I say, whoops, 
and I have to explain to you why. I was behind the graphic, and you couldn't see my smiling face in my peach sort of color sweater here on the floor at the TD Garden. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe I should be like, you should be thanking me for that mistake. Just put the put the screen up over my face and hold it. Then maybe that's better. I just hold my hand up over my face. Anyway, I digress because it's late. I think the Celtics are still figuring out their rotations. And Joe Mazzulla is. There are going to be games, right? There's going to be like a game against the Knicks is important. Um, a game against the rival is important. There are going to be games here. Wednesday night's game is going to be a game where they they are going to probably play heavy minutes, and that's going to be an interesting game too because it's you know a rematch against Philly. What what's going to be done differently? Are they going to show anything different? Are they going to try anything different? Are they going to go with different rotations? Uh, but all of this between now and a month from now. You know, we'll just say Christmas is basically, we talk about Christmas being the unofficial first day of the season. I think it's going to take that long for Missoula to kind of figure out exactly what his rotations are going to be. You can see he certainly trusts Sam Hauser. Like, this is a nice development when it comes to the rotation. Sam Hauser, when you go, I think we can say one through seven, for sure. Al Horford's going to get his minutes. Sam Hauser, I think, can can feel comfortable in that he's going to get these minutes. Those That 22 minutes or so, he you can bump that up even. So I feel like he's starting to earn a fair amount of time on the floor. That's going to help. Maybe that could even help with Tatum kind of sitting a little extra. You can give Jalen Brown, when he's out there, now we start to, to build it out. Okay, maybe the pieces are Jalen plus Porzingis plus some Hauser plus maybe it's Drew Holiday, right? Veteran point guard with some experience there that, that Jalen respects, a big that can bail him out, a shooter that can bail him out, and however you want the fifth fifth person to be, it can be anybody. But you, this whole thing is figuring out the puzzle pieces. Maybe that's the puzzle. Maybe that's the when you're trying to figure out how to maximize Jalen Brown without Jason Tatum, maybe that's the way to go. And, you know, people are getting on me because I've been critical of Jalen Brown. It, it's, it's not that I'm necessarily entirely critical of Jalen Brown. It's that the Celtics need to figure out how to he, – he's a different player. He's a different player than Jason Tatum. You got to figure out how to maximize his skills. When you maximize Jalen Brown's skills, he's an all-NBA player. Like, how is that a criticism of the guy? You know, I'm calling him an all-NBA player. There's only 15 of those guys in the league. So he can be a top 15 player. It's just maximizing him, especially when Tatum's on the floor, off the floor. And the Celtics need that because... You can't just play those two together all the time, you know, unless that's the answer. Maybe the answer is less Jalen on his own and more Derek White, Drew Holiday, Christoph Porzingis, and, like, maybe those guys hold it down for a little while, and you start running some minutes with Tatum and Brown both off the floor. Maybe there's an answer there. Who knows? Um, and maybe that's matchup specific. But this whole kind of experiment, it, it's, it's all – unfolding, you know, in real time. We're starting to figure things out in real time. So I'm curious to see how Missoula kind of builds out these rotations moving forward. Will we see something different against Philadelphia? I don't know. But you've got Philadelphia coming up Wednesday. You've got Memphis uh, coming up uh, after that. It's, uh, no, it's, Memphis is on what the hell? Ah, I've lost. I've lost complete track of the schedule. My mind, all of a sudden, could you hear it coming to a screeching halt? Could you hear the skidding of my thoughts in my brain? Because I feel like that was that was pretty evident. Philadelphia on Wednesday, Toronto on Friday. That's the team I forgot. Memphis on Sunday, Charlotte on Monday. 
it's going to be interesting to see. And you, you're facing all these teams a second time. Who knows what they're going to show? But we'll watch for it. Uh, in the meantime, I will be here all week long, post game uh, Wednesday night against Philly, post game Friday. I will be in Memphis podcasting from Memphis Sunday night. So no mailbag Monday next week because there's games. Um, in fact, there's Sunday games the next two weeks. So no mailbags. But you can still you know, send in your questions. Maybe I'll get to a, a mailbag somewhere within the week. JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag. So check me out there. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. Send me your comments in the YouTube section. Let me know what you think. And I would love it if you share the podcast. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. They should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.